Hello everybody, this is Solke and I'm here today to give you the secret sauce for AP builds. Here I'm looking at mages build and by mages I mean spell casting, AP scaling, magic damage dealing champions, which is Syndra, Orianna and all the, the similar champions like Lebon. Before starting, there is one very important thing that you need to understand, which is the curve of damage per resistance. Because for mages, there is one very important item, which is sorcerer's shoes. Um, when you so the damage uh, compared to magic resistance here, a magic resistance is X. So if you would deal a hundred magic damage to a target with zero magic resist, you have one here on the whole left, um, and you deal a hundred percent damage. If your target has 100% uh, 100 magic resist you deal half the damage 0 0.5 what's important is that the curve goes higher towards one the closer to zero it is so uh, for example for um, an AD carry that in the mid game will have about 35 magic resist without mercury threads uh, if you get uh, the first 10 if you get 18 magic penetration you get to 70% of your magic damage to uh, about 85%, which is a huge increase. It's a huge increase. And if you go even lower than that, it increases even faster towards, you know, magic damage as true damage. So magic penetration is compounding. The more you have of it, the better it is. And for mages in particular, it's crucial, even more than lethality is for assassins because of sorcerer's shoes, which is a crazy good early source of magic penetration. So without further ado, let's go into uh, the mages items. We've already looked at the mages uh, mythics, which uh, is, well, I'm going to add one below here. This will be more readable. And the conclusion was that they all have, you know, their use cases pretty much. But uh, while they all have their use cases, they're not uh, all created equal. Magic, uh, because there's one thing I didn't touch on yesterday, which is uh, mythic passives gold efficiency. The gold efficiency of the mythic passive of Luden, Sempes, and Exec Rocket Belt, the five magic penetration, is so much better than other mythics, it's kind of unfair. It's uh, a lot of gold value, even with our assumptions, and it's even better because it compounds. The more you have, the better it is. And this is why Luden, Sempes, and Hexex Rocket Belt, on most champions, have the highest win rate. They are just the best stats you can get, and their mythic passives make them scales really, scale really, really well. The other okay would be Everfrost, uh, because it's so cheap and it has an okay mythic passive. But uh, there's a reason why Exact Rocket Belt and Luden Sempets are that good, and they are the basis I've used in most of my calculations. So, moving forward, after having talked again about the mythics, we can talk about the AP items. First thing first, the components. They are trash compared to AD components. Secret Arm Guard, Verdant Barrier, and Hextech Alternator are okay, but they're not on the level of Zeal or a Serrated Dirk or a Noon Quiver. This means the power curve of mages is very different, and they really rely on finished items as opposed to AD champions, which can do well with components early on. Um, Blighting Jewel is a weird item, and this is likely not a very good, very good calculation, but you can buy it against many tanks in the mid to late game, you know, it's not an early item. And the worst of all is Lost Chapter, where of course you're getting a lot of mana, but really no good combat stats for the price. Of course you're gonna get it, because if you wanna get Ludens, you have to get Lost Chapter, but it's still uh, so much worse than components for 80 items. And then we get to what I think is the, the secret item, the secret OP item that people don't buy close to enough, which is Magi Soul Stealer. It's 1k 6 gold, and it is by far the cheapest legendary item in the game. And what's very important is that you get the mythic passive. And in particular, if you get it with Ludens Tempest or Extec Rocket Belt, here you have a baseline efficiency on zero stacks of 60%, which is about a thousand gold worth of stats. And as I've said, the more magic penetration you have and the earlier, the earlier you get it, the better it is. So if you have Ludens Echo, Sorcerer's Shoes, and your Magi Soul Sealer, you're already at 29 magic penetration, which is going to be the maximum on squishes at this timing, which would be around 15 minutes. And you are losing money if you have zero stacks. Okay, but it's not that bad. You're losing about 600 gold and you get a big increase on your row base damage. And then if in any fight you happen to survive and get assists, 
it becomes crazy gold efficient. Because once you've upgraded it, a kill is 4 stacks, an assist is 2, and so it breaks even at 6 stacks, and it gets better and better uh, the more stacks you get. If you get 10 stacks, which can happen with one good team fight where you get one kill and three assists, and you manage to not die, then it's an insanely efficient item. And with all the magic penetration you get, your base damage gets increased by so much. I think Magi Soul Stealer should be core in almost all damage focused mages builds. And currently, people are only buying it when they're snowball and they don't really buy it in even games. They don't buy it when they're behind, when it, sh it is a tool that helps you get back into the game. You don't get that many stats just at the moment of buying it, but this means one catch on a sideline, one small fight or skirmish that you're able to steal can turn into a snowball advantage if your opponents don't have Magi Soul Stealer. So it was a big part, but TLDR is buy Magi Soul Stealer. Of course, I'm talking about if you are buying Ludens or, or Rocket Belt, because you get magic penetration as a passive, and that's where a lot of the gold comes from. And if you want um, all the AP in the world, that's, uh, that's a very specific situation, but that's the case for most mages. And also, if you get Sorcerer's Shoes with all this for the extra, you know, taste. Then we move to the standard, normal, normally priced legendary items, where I'm not taking into account the, the Mythic passive in the same way that I do for Magi Soul Stealer, because it's a really unique item. So, for Morale Anomicon, it's okay if you need Grievous Wounds, nothing fancy to say about it. Usually you have better sources with the Enchantress item. Uh, the tier item, Archangel Staff, it's good once it's fully stacked. You don't really need it to. Uh, you don't really need it to be with a mana mythic because you just get you know seven more, eight more uh, ability haste. It's not a huge difference, and you. It's an okay item. If it does make you weaker when you buy it, it takes a lot of time to stack. But if you're a mana bound champion and you're gonna need the mana, it's okay and you're gonna get a big power spike once you finish it because it's also a cheap uh, legendary. Then you have the two defensive options, which are both very good because they come at a regular price. They're cheap items. They're properly priced for their stats and they give you a decent passive in Benches Veil and an insanely strong active in Zonia's Hourglass. It still matters that you, you need to be wanting the armor for Zonia's Hourglass to make sense, because a lot of its gold value is tied in this 45 armor, but if you do want the armor, Zonia's Hourglass is, of course, a crazy good item, and we're gonna talk about it uh, in a second. You have Rylai, so I've taken the new patch's value, and it's okay if you really want the passive, but lots, uh, a lot of the gold goes into the HP. Then Void Staff, which is great at increasing your damage to tanks, of course, but not that good at the rest. And the thing is, if you're going for flat magic penetration, you will already be hitting uh, full penetration on squishes, except if they have a really high magic resist item. If uh, the squishy only gets mercury tr treads, you can get shadow flame to get through this magic penetration. If they get mercury thread plus um, the 1k3 AD and magic resist item that turns into Mo of Malmortius, uh, hop, Mo of Malmorgius. So if they get the Hex Drinker, then it can make sense uh, to get Void Staff if they're your primary targets. But usually I'd say most mages don't really have tanks as a primary target, and Void Staff doesn't really make sense until you really want to actively be damaging tanks for prolonged periods of time, and you want to be using your big spells on them because. This, if you are waiting for your, uh, for your ultimate, if you're a Syndra and you're ever only going to cast your ultimate on squishes, then Void Staff doesn't really do anything for you. So Void Staff, I think, is a bit too popular right now. It's a very good item, and I think it's an item that usually makes sense third or fourth when you're uh, hitting the front line as a mage. But still, I think it's kind of overvalued right now because with the standard magic penetration oriented build, you're already... Uh, piercing through all the magic resistance of squishy champions. Then we get to Shadow Flame. The issue with Shadow Flame is that it's a good item. The issue is it's too much magic penetration for most builds. When you get uh, the mythic passive of Luden's Echo and you have you know 29 magic penetration at 15 minutes with boots, one mythic, and your uh, Magi Soul Stellar, and you're getting five more which with each other legendary item, for example Ozonia, you don't really need that much more flat magic penetration because it's not doing anything, or percent penetration. 
So it's in a weird spot where it's good against squishy champions that only get Mercury Thread as a magic penetrate as a magic resist uh, solution. Then we get to a bit fancier item. So Horizon Focus, 10% damage increase is nothing to scoff at. It's a very big number, and if it's easy for you to proc Horizon Focus, uh, I think it's a good item. Uh, it's you know an I. Uh, um, a passive that can be reapplied uh, efficiently. Any slow or root or long range spell does proc Horizon Focus, and then for six seconds, you get increased damage. I think it's good. I think it's being maybe slightly underbought as a pure damage item with you know 150 HP, and I think it could be seeing a bit more uh, play. Lichbane, even with the buff, I think is not good enough as uh, a legendary because. You know, uh, with the others, I can see the use case. With Rylai, you get really, you really get a lot of uh, utility. Zonia, Banshee, on that, you know, you have a low gold efficiency, but a really good ability. But here, Lichbane, I'm taking into account the damage. It's a pure damage item that doesn't really give you enough damage to make sense. You don't get, you know, some ability haste or HP. You don't get any of that. You just get raw damage and some move speed and only 75 AP, which is very low. And it's it's a hard item, I think, to, to use efficiently, and I would rarely recommend it. Then we can go to Cosmic Drive, which is the weirdest item of, of item of all. It's a great item if you proc it with the 40 bonus AP. But proccing it means hitting three attacks or spells, and that's a lot. Most mages want their damage to be upfront. They want to be able to kill people who face check. So I think I'm not seeing who really wants that. Maybe on a Cassiopeia, it makes a lot of sense. Maybe even on, on an Akali. But without that, it's really hard to really make it good. And um, all the stats it gives is a bit cool as well. You know, AP, HP, ability haste, move speed, then it's stacking damage. Overall, it's a weird item that gives you a lot of things if you get it right, but it's just so hard to get right for a 3,000 goal item. Then we get to the end, Demonic Embrace. So even if we try, uh, I, f I forgot to put the number. It would be, even if we can't Demonic Embrace, getting, uh, full ticks on two or three tanks. So let's say two tanks. So let's say it's about as efficient as 50 AP with the calculation we did. It's okay, it's gold efficient, but it's still not good. It's Demonic Embrace doesn't increase your DPS that much. You need to really be doing a lot of AOE damage to get a lot of value out of Demonic Embrace. And still it's gonna be a lot of, you know, uh, damage on the side and not necessarily the targets you want to be hitting. So Demonic Embrace right now is a bit uh, too low for da for uh, you know the damage output side. Uh, you pay a lot for 450 HP, and it's, I guess, an okay ATM for an Amumu or an off-tank, but even though it gives 60 AP, it's not a good AP item. So it's in this really weird spot where tanks and bruisers want to be buying it for the HP, but then there is still 60 AP that don't really make sense in the item. If Demonic Embrace gave resistances like it did in the past and maybe completely forego AP, I think it would become a much better item that would be better suited to a whole class of champions. And to top it off, we have the Rabadon's Death Cap, which by itself is not gold efficient and becomes very gold efficient as soon as you have about 200 AP. That's where you know you have the really huge breakpoint where you have 200 AP from other sources, then Death Cap is crazy. And you know what? If you get Magi Soul Stealer and you get stacks, and you have maybe you know a Duran's Ring lying there, and you also have a Ludwin's Tempest, you get to 150 AP pretty fast, and you can get to this 200 AP number reliably uh, on two on one and a half to two items. And so I think Rabadon right now is being bought a bit too late. I think if you go for an early Magi Soul Stealer build, which I think is the right build on every single mage that is damage oriented. Then, if you get any type of stacks going Rabadon, uh, you know, I call it the 2.5 item, because for me, the Magi Soul Stealer, you know, it's a, the 1.5 item spec. Then you get the 2.5 item spec with the Rabadon. But Rabadon is so expensive. Let's say if you, it's your three item spec, and then you get a crazy increase of damage. And if you go for maybe a Zonia before, then it's of course uh, directly good because with Zonia you get 65 AP and you get the 200 AP that you want to really make it worthwhile. Or Strauss Embrace. Anyways, if you go for anything else than Rabadon third, you should get it fourth, 
and it's often going to be better than Void Staff because on the targets that are meaningful to hit for you, which are squishy champions, then uh, this cap deals so much more damage. And of course, some people will tell you that you are getting overkill in, on overkill range on squishy champions because you are already killing them with your ultimate. That's true. If you already have kill threat with your ultimate, then getting too much damage to squishy champions might be overkill. But at the same time, you are gonna you, you are gonna get to a point where even basic spells rotation, the full rotation, is gonna threaten uh, squishies for three quarter of their HP, which can already you know take them out of fights. I still think that's often gonna be the right build. So to conclude, as mages, first you have uh, access to a very specific item, which is sorcerer shoes that you should be buying most of the time. If you want, if you really want tenacity from your Mercury thread, you can buy them. But if not, uh, if you just want a bit of magic resist, you can stay on a normal magic mental. You know, it's as good, and then you're not losing on the 18 magic penetration of the sorcerer shoes, which is crazy good. And once you have the sorcerer shoes, the mythic uh, item that give you magic penetration as a mythic passive, or in my opinion so good because they make your build so smooth to kill squishy champions while you know leaving options open in your build you can get a zonia and a soul stealer as second and third items and still be dealing true damage to squishies on a very very cheap build so get sorcerer shoes get your mythic early because components suck for mage uh, for mage items and then get a magi soul stealer to get value out of this mythic uh, passive and after you've gotten this normally you should already be winning the game and in case things go wrong, you can get a Void Staff if there are really a lot of tanks, a Rabadon very quickly if things are going well and you have a few stacks on your Magi Soul Stealer. And maybe you really need mana, Seraph's Embrace is okay in the situations, and so on and so forth. There are no, you know, heinously bad items outside of maybe Lich Bane and I think Cosmic Drive and Demonic Embrace out of maybe very specific champions. So you can't really go wrong, but buy more Medi Soul Stillers, buy more Rabadons, and you're gonna win more games. Talk to you guys soon. And don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff.